All right, so for today's flow class, we'll start on our back. Uh, if you're comfortable in a Shavasana uh, shape, then do that. If you'd rather have the sole of the feet to the mat, that's fine too. It's really all about your lower back and um, how comfortable you are lying flat. Lying flat is a good thing to do. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Back out through the mouth. Inhale, in through the nose, fill up. Exhale, back out through the mouth. Inhale, in through the nose. Back out through the mouth. This time, in through the nose. Back out through the nose. Keep going, listening to the sound of your ujjayi breath. Making it loud enough so you can hear it, but it's still quiet so only you can hear it. Reach the arms overhead. Reach out through the legs. So just get long in your mat. Try not to take the shoulders with you. Keep those in place as you reach the arm. Hug the elbows in. Clasp opposite elbows overhead. Shoulder blades are resting on the mat. Uh, separate the feet about hip width distance, maybe a little bit wider. Take the right foot, cross it on top of the left foot. Lift the upper body up and over to the left. Set the shoulder blades down. Make sure both hips are touching down. Just a slight banana shape, so you're arcing to the left. Lift the upper body back up, bring it back to center, uncross the feet. Hook the feet the other way, left foot on top of right foot. Stretch the arms overhead, clasp opposite elbows the other way. Lift the upper body, lift it up and over to the right, setting everything back down. Upper body comes back up, bring it back to center, uncross the feet, stretch the arms overhead, reach out with the legs again, and start to walk the feet in. So soles of the feet on the mat, hug the knees in toward the chest. Set the left foot down to the mat, extend the right leg up, grab onto the back of the right thigh, Maybe extend the left leg forward. Your body's okay with that. Keep that right foot active. No, actually, both feet active. So the left toes are pointing up and the right toes are pointing down toward the base. And you can feel how if that leg is extended out in front of you, the left leg, if the toes are pointing up, you don't let the hip roll out to the side or the knee roll out to the side. So toes, left knee, both pointing straight up to the sky. Let's take a half happy baby here. So hug the right knee in toward the chest. Move the right knee out to the right, maybe halfway. And then you can hang on to uh, the knee the way, the way you have it. You can grab onto the back of the right thigh. You could grab the outer edge of the right foot, but that could be too much too soon. So see how open the right hip is. Left hand goes on top of the left thigh to keep that left thigh pressing down toward the back. And right knee comes in toward the chest. Set the right foot down to the mat. Bring the left knee in toward the chest. Start to extend the left leg up, grabbing onto the back of the left thigh. Toes come down toward the face. 
Maybe extend that right leg forward. Both feet are active. Keep that right knee pointing up along with the right toes. Hug the right knee in toward the chest. Oh, oh, sorry, left knee in toward the chest. Open the knee out to the left. Right hand, right thigh, pressing it down. Maybe grab onto the back of the left thigh. Could be the calf too, or maybe the foot if it's right there. You have to consider how much movement you've had this morning and if it's available right now. You know it'll probably be available later on in your practice. You just don't want to force it too soon. Happy baby is a difficult pose to start with, even half happy baby. So some version of it is where you should be. Left knee comes back in toward the chest, bring the right knee in too, so both knees come in. Then interlace the fingers back behind the head, resting the head in the hands. Move the knees away from you so they're right over the hips, feet in line with the knees. Lift the upper body up and away from the mat. Twist to the right, just the upper body. Come back to center, keep the upper body lifted. Twist to the left. Back to center, twist to the right. Back to center, twist to the left. So it's a little bit different back to center when you're only doing the upper body. Twist to the right. Back to center, twist to the left. Back to center, inhale, exhale, twist to the right. Inhale, back to center, exhale, twist to the left. One more each side. Inhale, back to center, exhale to the right. Inhale, back to center, exhale to the left. Inhale, back to center, add the legs. Left leg extends, twist to the right. Inhale, back to center, Exhale, twist to the left. Try to figure out what the difference is. What are you feeling? Inhale, back to center. Exhale, twist to the right. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, twist to the left. Careful not to bring the knees in too close to the chest. Back to center, twist to the right. Back to center, twist to the left. It's harder if the knees are farther away from you. Back to center, twist to the right. Back to center, twist to the left. Let's do one more each side. Back to center, twist to the right. Back to center, twist to the left. Back to center, rest the head, hug the knees in. Then set the feet down to the mat. Roll over to your right side. Bring yourself up to hands and knees, tabletop. So once you get there, Stack the hips right over the knees. Keep the thighs completely vertical. Bring the forearms and the hands down to the mat. So belly comes in. So notice if you uh, let the belly relax and lift the hips up and the belly goes down toward the mat, there's a big arch in the lower back. You're trying to take that away. So hug the belly in. You'll feel the length in the lower back. Keep that. Hips are set up right where you need them. Don't move them. Don't move them. Walk the elbows forward. Until you feel a nice opening start to happen in the upper body. Forehead comes down to the mat. So Anahitasana, puppy dog pose. First back bend, just breathe into it. Starting to introduce this shape to the body. For your time on your mat today. Maybe you bring the hands together and back behind the head. If it's deeper, so if it's too much, skip it. If it's going well, you could walk the elbows forward, getting a little bit more length. Make sure you're still hugging the navel in so you keep that lower back long.
Yeah, come back down to the mat, lift the head, walk the elbows back in. So try to land with the elbows right underneath the shoulders. Hands align with the elbows. What I see a lot is the hands come together and that's not aligned with the elbows. So you need to widen them so they're going straight forward. Step back to a forearm plank. Press down into the hands and the forearms. Legs are lifted, hips in line with the rest of the body. So you don't want them sinking down toward the mat or lifting up high. Your body will automatically want to do that to move this pose a little bit easier. And then lengthen the sternum forward. So changing the gaze, looking down and forward helps. You're looking ahead of the hands. Outer hips hug in. Inner thighs spin up. Legs are long. Keep the feet where they are. They should be about hip width distance or a little bit wider. Move both heels over to the left. Left hand can come in a little bit, especially if you want more space for the shoulder. Right arm reaches up for a form side plank. So lengthen the legs. You can lift the hips up, the tail going down toward the heels. You're pushing them out away from you. Still with that Ujjayi breath. Right forearm comes back down to the mat. Back and forearm plank. Get it set up so you feel even. Both heels go over to the right. Right hand can come in. Left arm reaches up. Legs are long. Stretch them way back behind you. Lift that left arm up. Push the mat away from you. It's like those inner thighs are trying to scissor together even though the feet are staggered. Left forearm comes back down to the mat. Your back and forearm plank. Set the knees down to the mat. Come up, come up to the hands. Child pose. Big toes together. Hips go back. Forehead comes down. Arms out in front of you is ideal because we're trying to open up the upper body. So we just built some heat there. Now you can draw the hips back toward the heels as much as the knees will allow. And then crawl the fingertips forward. Straighten the arms so much the elbows and the forearms lift away from the mat. Come up to hands and knees, tabletop. Let's do some rounds of cat cow. On the inhale, reach the heart forward, lift the tail. On the exhale, round the spine, chin in toward the chest. Keep going at your own pace. Inhaling forward, exhaling back. One more cycle, inhale and exhale. Back to a neutral spine. Start to tuck the toes. Hover the knees away from the mat as low as you can without touching the mat. So that's hugging the belly in, pushing the mat away from you. Getting into the core once again. Set the hips back down to the mat, or sorry, set the knees down to the mat. Walk the hands forward ahead of the shoulders. Line up your index finger so they're pointing straight forward, and you're trying to keep the thumbs to point toward one another. Tuck the toes, lift the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Shoulders going toward the hips, heels going toward the mat. Hips are lifting up as high as you can, belly hugging in, lowest front ribs hugging in. Let the neck hang. You can also nod the head yes and no a couple of times. That's a nice way to make sure that the neck isn't working. It doesn't need to do anything. But it wants to. Mm -hmm. Bend the knees. Look forward to the top of the mat. Step or walk. Bring the feet up between the hands. No rush here. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Two more like that. Think about a back bend when you come up halfway. Inhale up, reach the heart forward. Exhale, come back down. 
in your left halfway. Exhale, fold. Circle the arms on the inhale. Bring the palms together overhead and down in front of the heart. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Heel to the feet a little wider than hip width distance. Setting up for a yogi squat. So heels in, toes out. Slowly start to bring the hips down. Any amount that feels like a gentle place for you to be. So if your heels start lifting away from the mat, come up higher so you can keep the heels down on the mat. So your squat might not be that low and that's fine, but heels need to stay down. And then eventually you're starting to bring the hips down. If you can come all the way down, elbows come inside the knees. Knees and toes need to stay in the, stay in the same direction, no matter where you are in your squat. Gaze can come forward if you're down pretty low, but just make sure you're maximizing the length in the upper back and the neck. Core is definitely working in your Malasana Yogi squat. So are all the muscles around the hips. You want to hug them in so they're supporting the hips. Bring the hands back down to the mat. Straighten the legs. Heel to the feet to hip width distance. Your toes are pointing straight forward. Clasp opposite elbows. Let the head and the neck go. And then try to shift the weight forward into the balls of the feet so you get lighter in the heels of the feet. Neck isn't working, so your head can come closer to the legs. Switch the grip of the elbows, other forearm in front. Hands come down to the mat. Inhale up halfway. Exhale full. Bend the knees. Hands down to the mat. Step back to plank pose. Shift forward onto the toes. Bend the elbows halfway. Chaturanga. Come all the way down onto your stomach. Tops of the feet to the mat. Hands back by the lower ribs. Cobra. Just a little one. It doesn't need to be your biggest cobra. We're still warming up. You don't want to push it too far. Exhale, release. Tuck the toes. Fire back up to plank pose. You can always do hands and knees first if you'd like. And then back to downward facing dog. A few breaths here. Bend the knees. Look forward to the top of the mat. Walk, step, jump, get the feet up between the hands. Inhale up, halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, circle the arms all the way up to standing. Hands come together overhead, down in front of the heart. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up, halfway. Exhale, fold, bend the knees, hands to the mat, step back to plank pose, shift forward onto the toes, bend the elbows halfway, up dog or cobra. Down dog. Bend the knees, look to the top of the mat, bring the feet up between the hands. Inhale up halfway, exhale fold, arms all the way up overhead, bring the hands together, down in front of the heart. Inhale, reach the arms up, exhale forward fold. Inhale up halfway, exhale fold, bend the knees, hands come down to the mat, step back to plank pose, lower down halfway chaturanga, Inhale up for your back bend. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Bend the knees, 
Look up to the top of the mat. Get the feet up between the hands. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach the arms up overhead. Bring the hands together on the exhale, down in front of the heart. One more. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, left halfway. Exhale, fold, hands down, bend the knees, step back to plank pose, lower down, halfway chaturanga. Inhale, up for your back bend. Exhale, back, downward facing dog. Lift the right leg up and back, three-legged down dog. Bring the right knee to the left tricep, so you're twisting. Stack the shoulders over the wrists. Come back to your three-legged down dog. Step the right foot up between the hands, coming into a runner's lunge. Coming up onto the fingertips, reaching the chest forward. Rise all the way up to crescent pose. Dig down into the legs, reach the arms up. You could put a little bend in the back knee, especially if you're feeling any tightness behind the hips, lower back area. And then work toward a straighter back leg, but you might be better off with the bend in the back knee. So see what's happening there. Left arm reaches forward, right arm reaches back. So finding a twist, keeping the lunge deep in the knee. You could look to the right if you're feeling pretty good here, or you can have that back hands. Back leg stays lifted. Keep the body in the twist. If you're looking to the side, bring the gaze back forward. Lift the front palm up. Bring that back hand, the right hand, to the back of the left thigh. Reach the left arm up. So chest up to the sky. Pubic bone to tailbone, tailbone to pubic bone. Bring the gaze forward. Left hand comes all the way down to the mat. Right arm reaches up. So still in a twist, but the chest is coming down and the hand coming down. Right arm still reaching up. Right hand comes down to the mat. Send that right leg up and back, three-legged down dog. Right knee, left tricep again. This time, spin onto the inner edge of the back foot. Extend the right leg forward off the side of the mat. Reach that left arm up. So fall in triangle. Push the mat away from you. Press into the feet to lift the hips up higher. Left hand comes down to the mat. Right leg reaches up and back, three-legged down dog. Set the right foot down to the mat. Stay here in downward facing dog. If you want a vinyasa, you have the opportunity to take one. But be mindful of those vinyasas today. We are going to put some weight, extra weight on the shoulder. So, uh, you know, make your decisions accordingly. Left leg reaches up and back. Left knee, right tricep. Three-legged down bar. Left foot steps up between the hands. Feet hip width distance apart. Come on up to the fingertips. We're spending some time in this lunge just to get it set up so you feel even in both legs or as even as you can. And then reach the arms forward all the way up, crescent pose. Maybe a bend in the back knee. Find that space behind the hips. Keep it, work toward a straighter back leg. Doesn't have to be all the way straight. Right arm reaches forward, left arm reaches back. Maybe the gaze goes to the left, maybe it goes to that back hand. Gaze comes forward, keep the body in the twist. Flip the front palm up, left hand back of the right thigh. Reach up with that right arm. So think of a back bend, chest is reaching up, pubic bone and tailbone, tailbone to pubic bone.
Gaze comes forward, right hand all the way down to the mat underneath the right shoulder, left arm reaches up to the sky. Right thigh still lifted, you don't want it going down toward the mat. Left hand comes down to the mat, left leg goes up and back, three-legged down dog. Left knee, right tricep again, roll onto the inner reach of the back foot, extend the left leg forward, reach the right arm up, fall in triangle. Press into the feet, lift the hips up. Right hand comes down to the mat, left leg reaches up and back, three-legged down dog. Left foot comes down to the mat, full dog, or take a vinyasa. Bend the knees, look forward to the top of the mat, bring the feet up between the hands. Inhale up, halfway. Exhale, fold. Circle the arms all the way up to standing, hands come together overhead, down in front of the heart. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up, halfway. Exhale, fold, widen the feet, heels in, toes out, come back into your version of the squat. Maybe it's a little deeper this time if you're still working the hips down toward the heels. Chest lifts if your hips are low enough, elbows inside of the knees. So it's a hip opening. You wanna keep those knees and toes in line, chest as high as you can get it, hips as low as you can get them. Hands come down to the mat, straighten the legs, heel to the feet back to hip width distance. This time, interlace the fingers behind the back in your forward fold. Let the knuckles come back behind the head. Head comes closer to the legs. Most of us probably need to shift the weight a little bit more forward into the balls of the feet so that your heels get lighter and you can lift the hips up. Switch the weaving of the fingers, one index finger over. Hands come down to the mat. Inhale up one more time, halfway. Exhale, fold, bring the hands to the mat. Make your way back to downward facing dog. If you go straight there, you can flow through a vinyasa. It's up to you. Right leg reaches up and back. Right knee, left tricep. Three leg down dog. Step the right foot up between the hands. Feet hip width distance apart. Reach the heart forward. Rise up when you're ready. Crescent pose. Left arm reaches forward, right arm reaches back. You have time if you want to change the gaze and challenge your balance. Gaze comes forward, flip the front palm up, back hand at the back of the thigh, left arm reaches up. Left hand comes all the way down underneath the shoulder. Right arm reaches up. Right hand down to the mat. Three-legged down dog. The right leg goes up and back. Right knee, left tricep. Get it up high. Roll under the inner edge of the back foot. Extend the right leg forward. Lift the left arm up. Fall in triangle. Left hand comes down to the mat. Right leg reaches up and back. Set the right foot down to the mat. Left leg reaches up and back. Three-legged down dog. Left knee, right tricep. Inhale back. Three-legged down dog. Step the left foot through up between the hands, feet hip width. Take it up to crescent pose. Slower is always better.
right arm reaches forward, left arm reaches back. Maybe change the gaze. And this is, twist help us open up shoulders. So you want the hands in line with the shoulders, find that twist, then bring the gaze forward, you're still in the twist, flip the front palm up, left hand back of the right thigh, reach up, lift. Right hand comes down to the mat, underneath the shoulder, left arm reaches up. Left hand down to the mat, left leg up and back, three-legged down dog. Left knee, right tricep, roll onto the inner edge of the back foot, extend the left leg forward, reach the right arm up. Right hand down to the mat, left leg up and back, set that left foot down, downward facing dog, stay here, take a vinyasa, up to you. Bend knees, look forward to the top of the mat, bring the feet up between the hands. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Circle the arms all the way up to standing. Hands come together, down in front of the heart. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold, find your yogi squat, heels in, toes out. You could start narrowing the stance once the hips become more open, working with pointing the toes forward if they're that far into your squat. Otherwise, find one that works for you. Maybe the heels are just getting closer and closer to the mat. Hands come back down if they're lifted, straighten the legs. Heel toe the feet back to hip width distance. Interlace the fingers behind the back. Let the knuckles fall back behind the head. And let the head get closer to the legs in your forward fold. Switch the weaving of the fingers, one index finger over. Hands come down to the mat. Step back to plank pose. Make your way back, downward facing dog. And we'll start adding on to our flow. Right leg reaches up and back. Right knee, left tricep. Back to three-legged down dog. Right foot steps up between the hands. Runner's lunge. Taking it up to crescent when we're ready. Left arm reaches forward, right arm reaches back. Find that twist. You can look to the side and back if you want to. Helps you get into it a little bit deeper if you're comfortable enough to change the gaze. Bring the gaze forward, flip the front palm up, right hand back of the left thigh, reach up, lift that left side rib cage up, the heart up. Left hand comes down to the mat. Right arm reaches up. Right hand comes down to the mat. Right leg reaches up and back. Three-legged down dog. Right knee, left tricep. Fall in triangle. Move on to the uh, back foot. Extend the right leg out in front of you. Lift the left arm up. Left hand comes down to the mat. Three-legged down dog. Right leg up and back. Shift forward to a three-legged, a uh, three-pronged plank. So right foot in line with the left foot. Move on to the outer of the left foot. Step the right toes back behind you. Reach the right arm up and back. So a wild thing. So it's side plank on the left side. Right big toes light. Back to downward facing dog. Stay there. Maybe a vinyasa, but just be mindful of what your body needs. Left leg reaches up and back, three-legged down dog. Left knee, right tricep, three-legged down dog. 
Left foot steps up between the hands, crescent pose. Right arm reaches forward, left arm reaches back. Maybe the gaze goes. Bring the gaze forward, flip the front palm up, left hand, right thigh, reach up. Right hand all the way down to the mat, left arm reaches up. Left hand comes down to the mat, left leg up and back, three-legged down dog, left knee, right tricep, fallen triangle. Back foot comes down, extend the left leg forward, reach the right arm up. Right hand comes down to the mat, left leg reaches up and back. Glide forward to plank pose, keeping the left foot lifted. Roll onto the outer edge of the right foot. Step the left toe lightly back behind you. Reach the left arm up and over the ear. Glutes are lifting the hips up, the back bend. Back to side plank, downward facing dog. Five reps here, unless you're doing something else. Bend the knees, look forward to the top of the mat, get the feet up between the hands. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Take your squat here, heel toe the feet a little bit wider, bring the hips down, hands in front of the heart if your heels are down. Hands come down to the mat, straighten the legs, heel toe the feet, back to hip width, interlace the fingers behind the back, let the knuckles go back behind the head. And if the fingers don't interlace, you can always just squeeze the palms together, releasing the hands. You're still getting a shoulder opening that way. Switch the weaving of the fingers, one finger over. Keep moving the shoulders toward the hips. Hands come down to the mat. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. You're coming all the way up to standing on your inhale. Circle the arms. Bring the palms together overhead, down in front of the heart. Reach the arms up overhead. So Urdhva Haskasana, with the feet, it's like you're trying to spread them out apart so you feel the muscles in the legs lift and the core hug in. Find the focal point in front of you, shift the weight over to the right foot, lift the left knee up. Take this left hand inside the left foot, grab onto the big toe with the first two fingers and the thumb. So your hand, your arms inside the leg, standing tall. Knees just going straight up, it's not going out to the left. So try that, that's a deep hip opening. And then see, maybe you start to play with extending the leg forward, keeping the right arm lifted and the right thigh back. Lift the left arm up, keep the left leg where it is. Step back to crescent pose. See if you can do it without keeping, uh, without touching the foot on the mat and keeping the back leg straight. You can bend the front knee, land light on the back foot, reach the arms up. Left arm reaches forward, right arm reaches back. Flip the front palm up, right hand back of the left thigh, reach up with that left arm. Left hand all the way down to the mat, right arm reaches up. Right hand comes down to the mat, right leg up and back, three-legged down dog. Right knee, left tricep, fallen triangles. Come onto the inner edge of the back foot, extend the right leg, lift the left arm up. Left hand comes back down to the mat, three-legged down dog. Glide forward to plank, hover the right toes away from the mat, roll onto the outer edge of the left foot, step the right big toe back, reach the right arm up and over the ear. 
Use the glutes to lift the hips, find a back bend. Right arm reaches up to the sky, back down to the mat, downward facing dog. Bend the knees, look forward to the top of the mat, step, walk, get the feet up between the hands. Inhale up, halfway. Exhale, fold. Circle the arms all the way up to standing, hands come together, down in front of the heart. Urdhva Hastasana, reach the arms up overhead, spread the mat with the feet, lift the chest, outer hips hug in, gaze is straight forward, so back of the neck is long. Shift the weight over to the left foot, bring the right knee as high as you can in toward the chest. Reach inside the right leg with the right hand. Grab the big toe with the first two fingers and the thumb. Try to point the knee straight up and keep that left side back. Extend the right leg forward any amount. Reach the right arm up. Keep that right leg lifted. Crescent pose. Right leg can straight, stay straight. Hover it over the mat. And then bend the standing leg, reach back with the ball of the right foot, land light, chest up, arms up, crescent pose. Right arm reaches forward, left arm reaches back through a twist. Gaze comes forward, flip the front palm up, left hand, back of the right thigh, reach the right arm up. Right hand comes down to the mat, right underneath the shoulder, left arm reaches up to the sky. Left hand to the mat, left leg up and back, three-legged down dog. Left knee, right tricep, stack the shoulders over the wrist, come onto the inner end of the back foot, extend the left leg forward, right arm reaches up. Right hand down to the mat, three-legged down dog. Glide forward to plank pose, keep that left foot hovering, come onto the outer edge of the right foot, step the left big toe back behind you, as light as you can, reach the left arm up and over, lift up. Left arm up to the sky, back to side plank, downward facing dog. Three more breaths. Bend the knees, look forward to the top of the mat, step, walk, get the feet up between the hands. Inhale up, halfway. Exhale, fold, heel to the feet, back to Malasana, yogi squat. Funny how in some sequences there are certain poses that are, that are the challenge, and then in other sequences, those same poses can be a relief, right? It's all how we put them together. Hands come down to the mat, straighten the legs, heel toe the feet, back to hip width distance, interlace the fingers behind the head, let the knuckles fall back behind the head. Switch the grip, other finger, other index finger on top. Hands come down to the mat. Inhale up, halfway. Exhale, fold. Circle the arms all the way up to standing. Hands come together, down in front of the heart. Back to Urdhva Hastasana. So arms up overhead, spread them out with the feet. Keep the chest lifted, core in. So you're not puffing out the lowest front ribs. They're heading in, so you're standing really tall. And then with the gaze straight forward, shift the weight over to the right foot, lift the left knee up, and try to bring that top, the quad, in toward the chest. So get it up as high as you can without using your hands. And then reach down with the left hand, grab the big toe, and you want that left knee to point straight up. So just work on that for right now. Extend the left leg forward any amount. 
Take the right hand, grab the outer edge of the left foot or the left knee, reach back with the left arm. Stand as tall as you can. So you're coming into the twisted version of this pose. Gaze can stay forward if you want more of a challenge. Look to the left or maybe at that back hand. You've been playing with this in your crescent pose. Now you're putting the real challenge into practice. See where it is today. Gaze starts to come forward, reach the arms up overhead, step the left foot next to the right foot and forward fold all the way down over the legs. Heel to the feet a little bit wider, Malasana Yogi Squat. Hands come back down to the mat, heel to the feet back to hip width distance, Interlace the fingers behind the back. Let the knuckles go back behind the head. So the Padmasana, that's the standing pose when you hold on to your big toe. That's big for the shoulders and the hips. So we're doing a lot of both today in terms of opening and then challenging. Bring the hands back down to the mat. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Circle the arms all the way up to standing. Hands come together, down in front of the heart. Urdha Hastasana, reach the arms up, stand tall, shoulders away from the ears. Shift the weight over to the left foot. Bring the right quad all the way up into the chest, keeping the chest lifted. Reach inside the right leg, grab onto the big toe with the first two fingers and the thumb. Point the knee straight up. Notice how it wants to go out to the right. Extend the right leg forward. Left hand outside the left foot or left knee, reach the right arm back behind you, stand tall, keep the gaze forward or look to the right or even at that back hand. Gaze comes straight forward if you changed it, reach the arms up overhead, step the right foot next to the left foot, Forward fold all the way down over the legs. Inhale up halfway. Exhale fold. Uh, heel toe the feet a little bit wider. Malasana, last yogi squat. Hands come down to the mat. Heel toe the feet. Back to hip width distance. Interlace the fingers one more time behind the back. Let the knuckles fall back behind the head. Legs are straight. Switch the weaving of the fingers. Hands come down to the mat. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, full, bend the knees, hands come down to the mat, stay with me, step back to plank pose. Lift the hips up and back, downward facing dog, hug the lowest front ribs in. From here, look forward at the hands. At the same time, can you bring the forearms and the elbows down to the mat? Hands in line with the elbows. Start to walk the feet in, Dolphin pose. So lots of shoulder opening today. We did some back bending. We're putting it all together here. Not the easiest shape to be in. You want to play with lifting one leg up. Your legs are more open, so maybe that's an option. If you're lifting a leg up, look forward. You want to play with the forearms balance you can. Set the right foot down, lift the left leg up. We're just doing one of these, so don't worry, we're not coming back in. There's one long one. <laughs> Set the left foot down, walk back to forearm plank. It'll get sweet from here. <laughs> Set the hips down, take sphinx pose. So still staying in our back bend, tops of the feet down, open up across the chest. Tail points back toward the heels. Look down the bridge of the nose.
Okay. Come down onto your stomach. Widen the elbows. Get them in line with the shoulders. So you're practicing the arms. Bring the left knee out to the side. Inner edge of the foot down to the mat. Look to the right. See if you can get the left side of the head down the mat. You've been doing this one a lot lately. I don't know what it is because it just keeps going. Lift the head back up, bring that left leg back behind you, switching sides. Right knee comes out to the side, toes turned out, inner edge of the foot on the ground. Look to the left, see if you can rest the head on the mat. If you can't, you can always look the other way. Starting to feel the heart rate settle. It's a big practice today. Lift the head back up, send that right leg back behind you. Bring the hands to the mat just by the rib cage. Come up to hands and knees. Take child's pose with the knees and the feet together. So inner knees are touching, inner feet are touching. Shift the hips back to the heels. If your knees are okay with it, walk the hands forward. Bring the forehead down to the mat. Hands can stay out in front of you, or you can bring the arms back behind you, which will change the shape of the shoulder, shoulders. You'll feel a rounding in the upper back, which can be nice once they're warm. Come up to seated, so bring the feet over to one side, legs go out in front of you. And today we'll do, um, Art of your asana. So shift the weight over to the right hip, bend the left leg. You need to grab onto the top of this left foot. The idea is to get the toes pointing straight back. So try to get onto the top of the foot so you can make that happen. The heel needs to be away from the hip so that you can try to get that left hip down toward the mat. Knees as close together as you can get them. So it's a lot to work with. Um, I'd say the first one to work on is getting the toes pointing back. If it's not happening with the hips down the mat, then lift yourself up on the block or two until it does happen. Right toes point up. So this is half of the shape. Full shape would be both legs doing the same thing at the same time. So you can stay right here with the chest lifted. You could start to walk the hands back and come into a reclined version of that. If this left knee starts lifting away from the mat, then just come back to where you were. Some people can go back down onto the forearms. Some people can lie all the way down. I'll let you figure out what's good for you today. Tail still going forward toward that right heel. Start to bring yourself back up so the chest is up over the hips. Lean over to the right, extend the left leg forward. So you're back in Dandasana. And then you'll switch sides. Lean over to the left hip, bend the right leg, grab onto the top of the foot, point the toes back. See if you can get both hips down to the mat. Make sure you're not sitting on the right foot at all. Knees together, sit up tall. And if your pelvis is so shifted that you're leaning way over to the left, that's another cue to lift the hips up. We'll be able to get them more centered. So then you can bring the hips right on a block and then you won't have that issue at all. Okay, maybe you start to recline, see what happens there. Maybe you're back on the hands. Forearms are all the way back. Listen to your body. Don't be afraid to go past where I'm going. This isn't an easy pose for me.
start to come back forward, up to seated. Gently release that right leg forward. Toes up. Press the, the backs of the legs down into the mat. Toes up. Reach the arms up. Lift up as tall as you can by pressing down into the hips to lift the chest. Try not to take the shoulders. And then hinge forward. Kashimottanasana. Seated forward fold. So maybe the feet are right there. Maybe the mat's there or the legs. We just don't have the arms reaching forward. They need to touch down on something. You can let the head and the neck go. Come back up to seated, sole of the feet to the mat, scoop yourself forward, come on down onto your back. Let's take happy baby this time. So we started out with that half happy baby. Remember what that felt like in your body? Come into the full version. You saw all those options, back of the thighs, calves, ankles, inner or outer, just the feet. Just try to keep the hips down to the mat so you get that hip opening. If you feel like rocking side to side, you can. It doesn't feel good, just hold still. Keep the chest open, head down the mat. All those squats, the malasanas that we did should be helping you find a, a deeper variation of this pose. Bring the knees in toward the chest, close the eyes. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Exhale, Shavasana. Extend the legs out in front of you, arms down by the sides. Rest. Corpse pose. So the end of your practice, where it all comes together. To wiggle the fingers and toes. Reach the arms overhead, stretching out through the legs. Keep driving up overhead. Bring the feet to the mat, bend the knees. Roll over to your right side with the arms straight overhead. Try to lie the head in the bicep of the arm. It's a nice shoulder opening if you can get there. Left arm just rest down on the side of the body. This is great for right-handed people too because you know using the right shoulder more than the left shoulder sometimes. Left hand comes down in front of front of you, press yourself up to a seat, comfortable seat. However, you would meditate. Lift the chest, keep the eyes closed, bring the hands together in front of you. Slight bow the head. Taking a moment to honor and acknowledge your heart and spirit as well as everyone around you. Bring the head back up, blink open the eyes, namaste. Thank you. Hope you had a good practice.